Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I make terrariums or terraniums. Yeah, terraniums. Terrariums is with animals, I think. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to make them with uh, preserved moss instead of live moss. And this makes sure you don't have to water them or worry about the moss dying or anything. So, um, first I'm going to show you some other ones that I've made and how they look. And then I'm going to show you how I make them. So, let's go to it. So, this is made with, these are all made with preserved moss. Like, there's several different kinds of moss that I've used in them. And so, they're kind of cool. There's some lichen in, in them, too. I don't have to worry about any of the moss growing too much, because it's really hard to trim the moss once they're in these containers. Um, all these I have in this birdcage, I've had them um, basically like how they are now, but with real moss. And... They require a lot of maintenance. This one has some quartz and some bark and some lichen in it. And it's just pretty cool. And this one is mostly just moss. Now, I do like, so this is kind of hard to see where it's kind of sticking out right there a little bit. I'll take it out, get it under the lights a little bit better. So where it's sticking up over here, um, it's actually, you can see it stick up better <laughs> with the camera, but um, see those harder edges where it's kind of dried along, like right here? That is a lot easier to, you know, kind of hide and tuck under with fresh moss. Fresh moss is much easier to get, like, down on these edges, I like to tuck my moss down under, so that way it's under, you know, it kind of covers the dirt and stuff. But with this, you can't really tuck it under, and so it comes up, and then you see the brown moss underneath. And that is something that I don't particularly like as much with this. And so you can see over here where the moss is kind of up a little higher than down here. With the regular moss, with the, with the fresh moss, I can get it to slope more gently and have more of a natural line. But um, this has so much less maintenance. I mean... This, I actually had just taken all the moss out of, um, and I've had this arrangement for probably about four years um, before I had done this, and um, it was looking a little bad because what happens is the moss starts growing up the sides and you have to take care of that, and the moss, certain varieties grow up, kind of like grass would, and you have to trim it, and it's very difficult to trim. And so, what also happens is the moisture collects on the tops and things to where all this could have moisture on it if there's too much moisture in here and then you can't really see it as clearly and then you also have to clean the glass and you have to make sure that your cleaner isn't going to kill your moss. Um, I usually would use a like dilute, very diluted rubbing alcohol so that way it doesn't um, you know, doesn't create too much more extra moisture in there and I make sure that it stays ventilated for a while. I leave the dome off until um, it's all, all of the alcohol has um, dissipated because once your moss is in this enclosed system, that's all it gets. And it's really not good for any plant to be in an enclosed system like that. Um, but you can get away with it with the moss for a while. Like, I got away with it in this one very easily for two years. It wasn't until the last couple of years that the moss started getting old and it just wasn't nearly as happy. And also I've had to, in all of them, I have to take out moss and replace it with new moss. And it's very fun. It's extremely fun. But um, I think that it's, like, it's really hard to keep moss where I live without a dome. It will live outside in certain places. So I can use it um, in my landscape outside, but in inside without a cover, it just dries out really fast and it's more prone to mold and things, I find, like powdery mildew kind of stuff. But, um, so anyways, I think that there's a lot of pros to using it in these with the preserved moss, and I think it looks almost as good. So, 
not quite as good, but almost. And for like my window in here, so this window here, there's a patio with a, um, a porch and this is a north facing window. It gets hardly any light in here. So I could probably grow certain kinds of ferns and you know, there's a couple kinds of plants I could grow. They wouldn't necessarily grow per se, but they would stay alive probably just fine. So I have to um, decide if I want to sacrifice any plants or not. I haven't gotten to that point yet where I want to sacrifice any, so I am sticking with this for right now, and I think it looks pretty pretty good with this um, with this color of the wall, and um, it's more of a it's like a country or a white with like the the main like the regular whites, which are just plain whites, and um, even though I don't really care for this countertop that much, I think that the green looks really good with the kind of purple. So I ended up kind of kind of has some purple and greens in this room and it kind of ended up coming together especially after I added this so anyways I'm going to show you how I make these because I did film a video all about making this and then it got deleted so I have to make a new one so let's go do that so this is how this looks like in the sunshine and you know I don't keep it out in the sun but it's still kind of cool the smaller domed one. There's a little piece of lichen, and, or not lichen, reindeer moss. And then there's some lichen back here with some bark. There's this one. This one's kind of cool. It has only a little piece of lichen and lots of forest moss. This one is always my favorite just because I love the amethyst and I love having it against like a little mound. Which when I made this with live moss, I would make this mound a little bigger. It's a little harder to get it to have the rounded edges that I like with this one with the preserved moss, but it's still so beautiful. So I have all this junk behind me because this is my box that I use to keep all my terrarium stuff in. So I have like my charcoal and my rocks and things I keep at the bottom. But since I'm getting away from that, I'm also just using it to keep my preserved moss. So I have um, this moss. I think it, this is the one of Michael's. And here, I can get these off my head for a second. And then, um, I believe this is the one at Hobby Lobby, and then I also have, like, this one I think is from Walmart. So I've gotten them from all those places. I've also got them from the Dollar Tree. That moss I used to make moss balls with, um, because it just, it was just all over the place. Um, and so, I'm not going to use that for this project because it's just a little too crazy. Um, and then I have this small container. I'm going to be seeing if I can incorporate um, these. They're um, something. I don't know what they are. They have a little bit of um, like sandstone still on them, like ground up kind of dirt. And then I have this. I don't know what this is, but it's cool. So I'm going to see if I can use this because I like the colors in it. Some extra other kinds of materials that you'll probably need um, that I use. I use this to tamp it down. This is um, a chopstick and it has a flat end. So there's also ones that have pointed ends that they help too. But um, I also, I use my tweezers kind of for that, but they can scratch the glass sometimes. But I also use a butter knife. This helps really well. Just the, the end is rounded and I just, it kind of, gets things pushed down. This work, these both work amazingly well for when you're doing regular moss, like fresh moss, because this will, just, like, it'll push the moss down to do your edges and your corners really well. Um, sometimes for the same thing, I'll use, it like, a spoon, but um, I usually use this part. And a lot of different ends work well, as long as it's not too 
fancy dancy up at the top and sometimes that can get in the way. And then my secret weapon. Now with this kind with the preserved moss are tweezers. The long, the long tweezers um, work the best. These ones have an, um, an edge, like a curve to them, so that can help um, when you're trying to fit things like going this way or whatever when you're going so that way because with these to push something over in a certain way sometimes you have to go like that and sometimes you mess up other things and sometimes the opening isn't big enough to your containers because we're working with small things a lot of the time so these are a lifesaver also um when you're cleaning things I use rubbing alcohol and um, like paper towel, like soft paper towel or a lint-free cloth or um, sometimes I'll use a um, cotton cotton pad thing. Yeah, like, like a cotton pad. <laughs> I'll use those sometimes, they work pretty good too. But usually I just stick with a paper towel or, um, or a lint-free cloth. So let's get started. Oh, also I listen to stuff like audiobooks or whatever when I'm doing this because um, that way it helps me not get so distracted too. So, anyways. So I'm gonna take my rubbing alcohol and you can see that this container, um, here, this container is pretty dirty. I don't know why. Maybe I've used this as a, I don't think I've used this as a terrarium before, but then I got a microfiber cloth. And be careful of your fingernails when you're using um, rubbing alcohol because it takes off nail polish. Pretty good. If you want to, you can do a bed of rocks or anything underneath this to make it kind of look like there's dirt if you want to. I always have, um, I always go into making these with the intention of making it look like there's no dirt under there because I like, I like to see all the moss around it when I would make these with regular fresh moss. Um, so when I do this I do a little layer of rocks kind of thing because it kind of seems to help support the moss a little bit. I'm going to start with a layer of moss. I just have to decide what kind of moss. I think I'm going to use a little bit of, um, this is just kind of like sheet moss. I mean, it basically is. It's just not labeled as sheet moss because it doesn't come in full sheets. It's just flat moss. There is some moss that has backing to it also. And that's like the kind of moss that you would use for like a table runner. Uh, this though, see how it's it's just a flat piece of moss. This, um, there, there. This usually works the best for doing things um, where you want more of an even surface. So I use this as my base moss and then I'll do other mosses and lichens around it. Um, so usually this is kind of like just what I start off with and then um, I'll do other things. And so, here. This also tears really easily. So it just tears apart like this and then you can just stick it in places wherever you need it. And I like it because it stays together pretty easily as long as you don't tear at it, of course. If you want an arrangement to stay permanent and no matter how much you move it around and stuff, you can use hot glue. Um, I'm not going to do that though because I like to take things apart and redo them whenever I feel like it. I don't know how I like that in there. It might be a little big. This is the hardest part with this, is getting the moss to stay on the corners where you want them. Mm 
this is what I have so far. You can see it's not really staying in very well, and that's the hardest part with doing these. So you can, you can see in there, it's just not, it's not, you can definitely see on this side, it's not wanting to stay down at all. I think I'm going to ditch the white rocks and I'm just going to go and I'm just going to use some activated charcoal instead so that way uh, it'll blend in a little bit better with the bottom. That way I'll make it look like there's something there still though too. You could of course use soil if you really wanted to. Um, I'm not going to use that but and I like to take off some of the brown stuff on the bottom too. You can also use scissors for this as well. But this does break up the integrity. See when I take that apart how this comes apart super easy. So just be careful of that when you do that. But it makes it to where on your edges you can fit it there more snug. So I'm going to do this around the edges. And then I'm going to have another piece pushed against it, against this fine parts in the middle. That kind of more of a tougher piece in the middle. So this way the brown won't show quite as much. And then I can poke all these down. See how that has a much less space in between? And then I'm going to go in with some other kinds of moss, like some forest moss and stuff and some lichen to fill that in some more. This is what I'm using now. I like the texture of this stuff a lot. It feels really weird, the reindeer moss, but it, it weighs things down. I like this because of how much it weighs things down. See how see how dense this is? And it's just kind of weighty. Okay, see around there where I put the reindeer moss? That's flush against the rock the charcoal now. So that is working extremely well. I have this lighter forest moss that I'm putting in it. And you can see how it's lighter here. Oh, so it's lighter and then you, like if this is a light green and then you have the forest, the regular moss and then you have the lichen that's um, darker. When I'm pushing down the sides, I pinch my tweezers together and then push them down around the edges. So I just take it and then I'll just like pinch it down, push it around. Now I have a front part, and then it gets higher over here with the forest moss, and then there's a darker, the darker reindeer moss. And so that way I have a little bit of like a vignette. I'm going to be using this, um, I usually position these where people are going to mostly look at, at it from one area, and I, especially if it's going to be against a wall, I like to make it to where um, there's some more moss behind it and it just kind of gives it more of a forest feel or something. I don't know. I just like it a little bit better. So that's what I do. And um, I like to have something a little higher and then I like to have um, my thriller, I suppose, if you're going to think of this as an arrangement, um, is going to be some sort of a rock or something. So this is kind of like my spiller, but it's just kind of going up the back instead of going over the sides. And then my filler, of course, is just the basic sheet moss kind of stuff that I use. So anyways. I'm gonna use a little bit of this reindeer moss that isn't colored, it's just a, like a white reindeer moss. And I'm going to use this just to kind of stick in between the different mosses to kind of give even more contrast. So I'm going to just take little pieces like this, I just rip off.
Oh, now I put this rock in it, whatever this rock is. And so it's kind of backed up by there. I kind of like it. I kind of feel like there's a little bit too, moss ma too much moss back here, but I'm not really sure. So I'm going to work on it a little bit more. I have some lichen that's just dried. That it just comes in, like you get a collection. You can get you can get just the lichen. Well, not really, but usually it comes in with stuff like this, where it's a whole bunch of different things. There, see with the lichen in the back. It's. Uh, can you see the lichen in the back? There, yeah, you can see the lichen in the back right there. So um, there's some lichen back there that kind of gives even more contract, the contrast and depth. And that's something that you're, you might want to do because I, I like to do that. You can do something really simple where you just have like sheet moss and then whatever kind of thing you want in the middle. Um, just do some rocks or something, but I like to do more complicated things. But you can see in the back here, it's not very pretty with that lichen, so I'm going to take a similar piece and put it back there, or else just put some moss in it. This rock was messing everything up, and so now I have to start over pretty much. It's just all come apart. I'm using little rocks. So I have some Himalayan salt, I have all these little rocks of Himalayan salt and I think I'm going to try this in here. Since I don't have to water this and there's going to be no moisture in here, I can use salt. Isn't that kind of cool? And then I'm going to use a big piece of lichen. I'm going to kind of just stuff underneath the salt. Can you see this at all? Yeah. So you can see the salt right there, and then I'm going to put this up and put the lichen right under there. So that way it lifted up the salt. And it's stuck. <laughs> some small pieces of salt and some little white rocks. some extra small rocks in there too as well So I think that I'm done with this. Um, so it's kind of, there's a lot of reflections on the glass, of course, but I used the Himalayan salt that, it was a piece of Himalayan salt that I broke up, actually. And so, here, I'll show you close-ups in a minute, but um, I broke up 
made for their smaller pieces too. And I, I ended up not using the lichen in this one, but I just used, there's reindeer moss over here and some forest moss. It's more of a brighter green. I also have some lighter reindeer moss and there's also some um, white reindeer moss that's just like hasn't been colored. That's over here by the rock, which I think, I think I'm actually gonna add a little bit more. I think that looks really nice right there. Yeah, you can kind of see. I'll show you more of a close up in a minute, but um, I like this Himalayan salt. I think I might get some sand and do one that's just sand with the moss and, well, some of the reindeer moss and the, um, and some lichen maybe in the, in like a, some sort of a pale, like pink or something, or like a neutral color of sand with this because I think that this looks really beautiful. And um, so first, this is what it looks like. The lid on. Yeah, it's fine. Here's. What I do like about these is that you don't have to leave the lid on either. So you basically from the sides, so you can see the rocks in there a little bit, but there's so much moss around it, which I like how that looks. I like the, I mean, I can see the rocks a little bit easier than you can. I mean, quite a bit easier, but I like that the Himalayan salt is nested in here because this is a very small um, little glass jar. Um, if I'm going to be doing something where I want to show, you know, show all the different little rocks more. Then I'll do something a lot larger, and I'll usually, I'll usually actually just do like something with succulents or something instead. It'd be a lot different. But um, this one, um, you know, where it has sand and everything, then you can see the rocks. Because with the moss, the moss kind of takes center stage, and then, or you know, it's. The moss just goes around whatever you want for the centerpiece. That's what I usually do, and it's what I like. It does take a bit of work, but you don't have to make it as complicated as I do. I always make things more complicated than necessary. So, there's a little bit closer. And then right here, you can see the, mo the rocks coming out a little bit more, which I kind of, I wanted it to be, so I'll show you up close where the rocks are kind of coming from this big rock a little bit. I don't know. Anyways. And I think that this is the last side. So there's it's a little bit higher on one side than the other parts. Um, I did I did have it originally up a lot higher in the back, but I liked it with the Himalayan rock. I liked it better like this. Just because um the other rock, it had more height to it, whereas this, like, it was shorter down and then went up, and so I thought that looked good with the moss in the back. But with this, I like it kind of just more nested in. Here it is up close. You can see that little piece of reindeer moss that I added. I think that I like it because it balances out all the white over here. Because there's some lighter green along with those little white rocks, and there's a little bit more Himalayan salt and some a little bit bigger white rocks and the regular moss, and then there's a little bit of the forest moss and the reindeer moss that's darker. And then there's some more forest moss. And the forest moss that you can get can be darker or lighter. This one is a little bit lighter and I don't really use it as much, but I kind of liked it in with this arrangement. All the different parts. And I do like to have these open sometimes, but I like my ones are more of a dome shape. I like having those in the center of tables the best. Whereas one like these, I usually have it to where you're looking in on just one side. And so that way each side is different. It's a different view of the rocks and the moss. So. Anyways, that's my video for today. I hope you found it interesting because I couldn't find any videos on YouTube that's making terrariums with preserved moss for some reason. So um, I hope this helps some of you. And if you like this video, then please do subscribe if you want to see more of them because as I get more subscribers, then I'll be able to 
um, get some better equipment so that way I can make better quality videos for you and when I do get more um, better equipment so we have like a different tripod that because my other can my camera that works with my tripod that you can see down into what I'm working on better that one broke so I'm working with this one so when it, I will remake more of these videos and so that way you can see more of what exactly how I do these because I know that it was a little hard to see exactly what I was doing today so um, if you want to see more videos like this then please like it and um, subscribe for more content because I do videos um, like DIYs on health and beauty and um, sometimes like this and I've been doing plant videos lately and I do some health coaching videos on um, mostly just things that um, people have been asking me about um, how to do things so um, anyways um, I'll see you guys next week. Bye!